everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make two super trendy summer crop tops that I've been seeing literally everywhere on fast fashion websites like Shein, Zafo, Boohoo, as well as Instagram. Even though it's pretty cheap, I have been trying to be more mindful and aware of my consumption of fast fashion, especially due to how problematic the whole industry is in terms of human rights abuses, exploitation, and environmental damage. That said, I do know that sustainable fashion isn't accessible for everyone and it's almost a luxury at certain times and I'm not perfect I still do shop at fast fashion brands but I figured since I do have all the time in the world and I've recently acquired some basic minimal sewing skills I figured why not try to make them myself so in today's video the first crop top I'll be showing you how to make is this super cute singed crop top with a little lettuce hem and in that top I'll be breaking it down in three parts the first part I'll be showing you how to shrink an oversized t-shirt so this is more form-fitting and form-flattering as well as how to make the tunnels the second part I'll be showing you how to make the actual lettuce hem and the third part I'll be showing you how to make the string the second crop top I'll be showing you how to make is essentially this one and it's sort of like a milkmaid, peasant, busy, puff sleeve uh, t-shirt. This shirt, I have to admit, it was probably way harder than the first shirt. The first shirt took me only like one, one or two days. This shirt took me um, almost a week, I think. <laughs> but that's because I didn't know how to sew. What's this called? One eternity later. <laughs> Jersey. I didn't know how to sew jersey properly, so please do your research before sewing jersey or stretchy materials. Make sure to use a jersey needle instead of a regular needle because the jersey needles will be slightly rounder the tip so they'll essentially be moving all of the threads instead of piercing them a normal needle since it's too sharp it can pierce all of your jersey fabric and damage it or break the string more often so yeah make sure to switch your needle this shirt was way harder to make but i definitely think it's still worth it i'll be seeing you breaking it down in three parts again i'll be showing you how to make the front piece as well as the cups why are we doing this oh uh I'll be showing you how to make the front piece as well as the cups, then the back piece, then the sleeves, and in the end how to assemble everything together. I decided to try to go along with like the whole trendy theme and try to dress up as like an e-girl for the second look, but as you can tell, I probably miserably failed at that. It's not really my cup of tea, so uh, I tried. Um, it, it was more like a weird, I'm trying to mix and match a bunch of things look. I even bumped into a person from my high school in that outfit and I felt so embarrassed and shy because I was like, oh, I don't actually dress like a 13 year old TikToker in real life. Please don't judge me. But uh, yeah, I immediately regretted wearing that outfit outside afterwards. But uh, yeah. Oh, and today's video is featuring my new adopted baby plants. Last video, I just stole a bunch of plants from around my house. But this time, these babies I adopted. So this is T-Rex, this is Ivy, this is Junie, like a juniper berry because she's purple. And back there, that's Fernie. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. And if you want to learn how to make these super cute, trendy summer crop tops, then keep watching. Step 1. Shrinking the t-shirt and making the string tunnels. Take out your t-shirt and measure how long you want it to be. Then cut off the bottom. Taking a slim fitting shirt, place it over your t-shirt and then trace along the lines of the shirt and measure each side to make sure it's equal on both sides. This is optional, you can also wear the oversized t-shirt and then pin down each side with safety pins to see how tighter you'd like it to be. Sew a straight stitch over the lines we just drew. This is what will create that tailored effect. And don't forget to cut off the excess on the sides after you're done. So this is what I got in the end, but make sure to lay your sleeve flat down properly and evenly or else your armhole might be uneven. This is what it looks like tailored. This is the problem I was talking about. My armhole sleeves were a bit uneven because it didn't lay down flat evenly, but I didn't really care, so I just moved on. The next step, take a ruler and place it at the level of your armpits. Then mark the middle and connect it to the two top points of your neckline, creating a V shape. Then from that same middle point, 
draw a straight line all the way down to the bottom. And nope, nope, nope! Make sure to cut with scissors, not a rotary cutter, or else you'll cut through the back too. But I ended up just stitching that together in the end. Anyways, next up, connect the two front pieces together and pin them down. Then, draw another line one inch away from the edge of the two pieces. So a straight stitch on the line you drew. And once you lay it flat, it should look something like this. And now you have your two channels where to insert the strings in order to create that ruched effect. Step 2, lettuce hem. What a cute bunny. Now I highly recommend you test try on a scrap piece of fabric first. Simply fold one edge, then iron it. Then the trick to making it look like a lettuce hem or curly or kale hem, whatever you want, <laughs> is to pull on both sides and stretch the material. Also, make sure to put your stitch length to the widest and to continuously do your zigzag stitch with one stitch on the fabric and one stitch outside of the fabric. But you're gonna have to practice a bit and see what tension your fabric likes or what speed works best. Before doing the lettuce hems, make sure to cut off the edges of your old t-shirt. Now we're going to do the lettuce hem to the sleeves, the collar, and the bottom. This is what it should look like from the inside out. Afterwards, you can just cut the excess fabric with a pair of sharp scissors. Oh, and make sure to not cut through your tunnels. It might look weird right now, but it'll look fine once you've ruched your shirt. Step 3. Making the ruched effect. Taking extra pieces of scrap fabric, I simply cut a long ribbon. Then, to create the string or ribbon, you want to fold once on top, then a second time on the bottom, then a third time with both sides facing each other. Pin it down. And then you can simply sew a straight stitch on the edge. To insert the string inside our tunnels, you'll want to use a safety pin or a bodkin if you have one, but safety pin is really fine. And then simply take your string and pull it on one end of the tunnel and then loop it back in through the second tunnel and pull it. Tug and pull until it's completely even on both sides. And voila! We now have a cute lettuce hem crop top. Moving on to the second shirt, step 1, the front piece and cups. Take your t-shirt, then mark a rectangle shape that'll be your front piece. For your reference, mine was 15 inches wide and 8 inches tall. Cut out your rectangle piece. You should have two identical rectangle pieces. Then take one single rectangle and fold it in half. Mark one inch away from the folded edge. Then take your trusty bra and draw the cup shape starting off from where you made a mark. Cut out your cup shape. This 
This will be the front piece of our bodice where we'll be attaching the cups to it later. Take the rest of your t-shirt and cut off the front piece as close as you can to the sleeves and the neckline. To find the dimensions of the cup, take your bra again and measure the width of your bra and add 5 cm. Then measure the height of your bra and add 4 cm. Then draw two rectangles with the dimensions you've calculated. Cut out the two rectangles. Place the rectangles over each other and round the edges in order to create a cup effect. Cut the edges off. In order for our cups to be slightly angled, I simply trimmed the bottoms with a slight angle to it. Sew a straight stitch along the rounded edge of your cup with the widest stitch length possible without sewing backwards at any point in time. Make sure to have enough hanging loose thread on each side, then simply pull the top thread while shushing away the rest of the fabric until you have that nice ruffled effect. Pin down a 6 inch or 15 centimeter elastic one inch away from the non-ruffled edge. Repeat the same step on the other side. Then simply do a zigzag stitch over the elastic and make sure to stretch or pull the elastic while you're sewing it. Repeat the same steps for the other cup. Before connecting the cups to our front piece, make sure to do a double folded hem on the top and bottom of the piece. Then to connect the cups to the front piece, fold your cup inwards, making sure that the two right sides of each piece are facing and touching each other while the wrong sides are facing outwards. Do a straight stitch and voila, it should look something like this. Step 2, the back piece. Sorry, my drawing sort of looks like a potato chip bag. Take the remainder of your shirt, fold it in half, and cut the edge with a slight angle in order to create a nice tailored effect. Then we'll be taking three 12 inch or 30 centimeter elastics and we'll be sewing it with a zigzag stitch on the top, middle, and bottom of our back piece. And here's a warning this is what happens if you don't switch your needles. To avoid a lot of headache, simply switch your needles for a jersey or a stretch needle. Secure the elastic with zigzag stitch for the top and middle. Then for the bottom, fold your fabric over the elastic hiding it, stitching with a zigzag stitch, and this will create a sort of cased elastic look. Don't forget to stretch or pull the elastic as you're sewing. Step 3, the puff sleeves. Poof! Cut the edges of your sleeves. Then cut the short end of your sleeve in order to open it up. I added two 7 inches or 17 centimeter rectangles on each side in order to elongate the sleeve and I also did a double fold hem on the top and bottom. Next up, zigzag stitch two 12 inch or 30 centimeter elastics on the top and bottom, always stretching or pulling to the max as you sew. And here, I sort of encountered a problem. My sleeve was way too long, so I ended up just disregarding the second extra rectangle piece and cutting it off and simply sewing a zigzag stitch to attach the rest together. Oh, 
To make the string, take the bottom edge of your original t-shirt and take out all of the stitches. It ended up being approximately 4 centimeters. Then, just as we did for the first shirt, you're going to want to fold it in half twice, then fold it over each other and pin it down. And then simply sew along the edge. Secure the ends with a couple of straight stitches. To attach the back to the front piece, pin down each piece with the right sides facing each other and the wrong sides facing outwards. Then sew a zigzag stitch along the edges. My back piece ended up being way longer than my front piece, but that's okay because I ended up using that as a guide for where I'll be inserting my sleeves. To insert the sleeves to the tube top, lay your shirt sideways and flat down. Then pin down the bottom of your sleeve to the armhole. Make sure the two right sides are facing each other and touching each other, then zigzag stitch that together. I did a couple of zigzag stitches back and forth just to make sure it's extra secure. It should look something like this. I attached the strings to the front loose ends of the cup with a couple of straight stitches and voila! One, two, three, fuck it!